God warning to you? It's not happiness and peace that comes and goes. It's sickness, suffering, and confusion that comes and goes. It's Lisa Natoli. She says many people mistakenly think peace and happiness comes and goes. They have a brief experience of peace or joy, and then they think they lost it. Happiness and peace is your permanent nature. It never changes. It does not fade or dim or go away. What goes away is your attention on your true nature. And when you do that, other things arise, like sickness, doubt, worry, anger, overwhelm, like fear. That's what comes and goes. Fear is a big one, a very loud visitor that comes and goes. A listener wrote in recently. She said, I'd love to hear more about how exactly to replace fear with love, like when being faced with seemingly impossible situations in life. I can come to terms with seeing God, love, and the difficult people. But when facing fear, I'm stumped. In the Upanishads, we're taught, the Upanishads are the ancient spiritual texts from India. We're taught that fear comes when there is a second, when a second is perceived, when you see two, where there's only one. So when you spiritually translate a difficult person back into God, back into love, knowing what's actually there, knowing that it's God dressed up. You've gone from two to one. You've gone from you and an other to just love being there, not a you perceiving that other as God dressed up, leaving yourself out of the equation, but knowing yourself as that love too, knowing only love is here. And so you have to do the same with the emotion of fear. I'd say it manifests where you are as a pounding heart, a sense of doom, maybe a pit in your stomach or not in your throat. Whatever those sensations, that chorus of sensations is for you. Noticing when it has come, which is truly the first and last step. Recognizing that you are aware that fear has come. You're not fearful. You're not scared. You see that it has come. It's loud, but it's just a visitor. It will go just as sure as it came. And so now you have one of a few options. We have many tools in the toolkit, but I'll share again the ones that have been most effective for me. The first one is to simply ask yourself, is love here too? And so the fear is there, raging, and you have enough awareness to ask, is love here? And you listen for the silence following the question. And even though the fear is there and that roller coaster stomach feeling is still there, you start to sense the love there and you give that your attention. Instead of your attention being completely on the visitor, you keep your attention on home, on the home itself, on love. Another tool is to become aware that fear is visiting. And immediately remember, this moment couldn't be any other way. This fear couldn't be any different. Fear is a part of this moment just as much as the furniture is. I'm not resisting the furniture in this room. I'm not resisting the fear in this room. And that allowing, again, you begin to become aware of the love that's always there, that's not coming and going, the house itself. You're being the house. You're being the love that fear has come to visit. Another powerful one that comes from A Course in Miracles is to notice the fear and say, I'm not scared for the reason I think. I'm scared because I forgot love. You forgot you were the house and thought you were the visitor. And the instant you remember that your love, the fear can still be there. It will still be there. But you know, because you feel that felt faith that all is well that everything is going to be okay. Not because you think it will, but because you know it will. You got still and you knew it would be okay. Another more advanced technique is to go right to the felt knowing, the feeling that only love is here. To completely unsee everything, every form, to abide in and as the formless. 
When I say unsee, I mean to not believe in. And you can only unsee by feeling love. When the love gets louder than the scene, you're unseeing the scene. You're unseeing the images. You're not believing in the world appearance because you know only love is here. But love is louder than the fear. So let's say you're seated at the kitchen table and fear has come to visit. There's racing thoughts. There's maybe a knot in your throat, a tightness in your chest. Immediately you close your eyes on the world scene. And the world scene includes the feeling of fear. And in my experience, it's like at once, I know love is all there is. So where there appears to be a kitchen, only love is there. Where there appears to be a body sitting at a table, only love is there. Where there appears to be racing thoughts, where there appears to be a mind, only love is there. Where there appears to be fear, only love is there. For a holy instant, like it says in A Course in Miracles, you dissolve everything back into love. You translate every appearance back into love, including yourself including the one that's being visited by fear that's also translated back into God. And then you rest as that. You rest as that love. You rest as that God field where nothing is but it. Once again, we're back at one. Shout out Brian McKnight. The deepest truth is that there's not God and fear. There's not God and the situation. There's only God. There's only love. And that literally takes like less than a second. And the eyes open. And even though the stuff, the kitchen, the table, the body is still seen, the truth is felt. The truth is known. And then you hold on to that truth. Even though you see the body, even though you believe you are the body, you continue to feel and know the truth. It's our challenge to remember to know the one where the many are seen to be like the goldsmith, where you see rings and earrings and bracelets. He sees only gold. Where you see a table, a chair, a bookshelf, the carpenter sees only wood. We have to become like that carpenter, like that goldsmith. We have to become like the saints to see the world but know only love. If you ever saw that movie, A Wrinkle in Time, at one point they were in a mirage, they were like in a desert that turned into a beach scene. And so all of a sudden there's water and there's people and there's picnic blankets and lots of food, like delicious food for everyone, including them. And so one of the main characters picks up a sandwich and he's enjoying that sandwich. But the other character who's a little bit more tapped in to this love, he picks up a sandwich cautiously, suspiciously, and bites into it, and immediately recognizes that it's sand. It's not a sandwich, it's sand. It's sand. No matter what's appearing in this mirage that you call your life, it's all just the sand. Only sand is actually there. That's how we have to be and move in this world, to see the water in the mirage or the sandwich in the mirage and know that they're just sand too. No matter how glittery, or scary the appearance is. That's why desire, when you're chasing after things, when you realize that it's all just sand, you stop and you be still in the knowing that it's all just sand. And that's a very powerful place to be. That's the place of miracles. It's a place of healing. That's the end of fear. That's the real end of the world. The end of your belief in it. Only love is here. And I love you. And we'll chat soon. If this episode helped you feel good, helped you feel God, then leave a review on Apple Podcasts and screenshot it and send it to me for a free gift. And follow me on Patreon so I can see you, so I can see your smile.